So here we got a view in of Washington National Airport, and at the bottom you've got the METAR that we pulled off of aviationweather.gov. Now, this is gobbledygook, I'll be perfectly honest. You know, if you're looking at this for the first time, it's almost completely impossible to decipher what's going on. So let's break down each little string in this raw METAR data to get a determination of what the reported weather is here. So first of all, you got the station identifier. This is a four character code that's gonna to correspond to the airport. Now, if you've flown into Washington National and you buy your ticket on like Orbitz or something like that, you know that DCA is the airport code. It's just a three digit code. BWI for Baltimore, JFK for, for Kennedy in New York. But all these airports that have three letters in their name are gonna also start with a K if they're in the continental United States, right? K for continental, I suppose. That's going to be how we distinguish a three-letter airport in the United States from a three-letter airport somewhere else in the world. So it's kind of like the international format is to have that letter before the, the three digits. So the full identifier here is KDCA, but in any case, we're talking about Washington National Airport. This next string is the day and the month or I'm sorry, the day of the month and the time when the report was issued. <clears throat> so this uh, string says that it was issued on the 14th of the month at something called 1852 Zulu time. Zulu time is universal time in, in Greenwich, England, which is uh, depending on uh, what time of the year you are here in the East Coast, either four hours or five hours ahead. So 1852 is going to be roughly 2.52 p.m. local time. The next string here relates to the winds. The winds are being reported to be blowing out of a 350 degree direction, meaning that they're coming from almost due north, 350 degrees, and there's sustained winds of 12 knots. That's that 12 figure there. But then there's been gusts reported up to 16 knots. So that 12 G16 means that you have 12 knots of wind with gusts up to 16 knots reported. The surface visibility is reported as 10 miles or 10 statuette miles. Now, 10 miles is not perfect visibility. Usually on a really, really clear day, you're able to see 40, 50 miles even if, if, it's, uh, if it's clear enough. So th they only report up to 10 miles. So if it says 10 miles, it's typically meaning that it's better than 10 miles out there. Next, you have the heights of various cloud layers above the airport. So there's equipment that are able to discern if there's a cloud above the airport and what altitude those clouds are at and also how much of the sky is being obscured. So what this means here, this SCT-065, means that there's a layer of scattered clouds at 6,500 feet. Those numbers are giving you feet in hundreds of feet, basically. So add two zeros to it, you get 6,500. So there's a scattered layer at 6,500 and then a broken layer at 25,000 feet. So two layers of clouds here. Next, you get the temperature and the dew point. Now, this is given in Celsius. Now, if you you know remember from the video there, the graphical representation was giving it in Fahrenheit, but here the official source is in Celsius. So we'll we'll try to stick with Celsius just because that's what's the official source mostly. So we get a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius and a dew point of 20. And the difference between those two, the spread between those two, is going to be an indicator of the relative humidity. Next, you've got the altimeter setting, 29.99 inches of mercury. So that'll be what you would use to set your altimeter prior to starting a flight. Now, the next string here is the remarks section. Now, remarks can be very, very varied in terms of what gets put in there. But we'll interpret what's in the remarks section for Washington National in this report here before we really get into everything that you might see here. But basically, here are the, here are the remarks. The, AO2 indicates that the station can determine the type of precipitation, meaning it can discern between rain and snow. SLP155 means that it's showing a sea level pressure in a different unit of measurement, in hectopascals, which is like the metric version of inches of mercury. So 
one five five is basically the last three digits. I told you this was really, really difficult stuff, but it, but it was written uh, in a way to sort of save characters and save space when computing power was uh, was not as advanced as it is now. So that one five five means that you add one zero to the beginning of it, and that's your hectopascals of atmospheric pressure. One zero, or I'm sorry, one thousand fifteen point five hectopascals. If you're really curious, you can do the conversion, but it equals twenty nine point ninety nine inches of mercury. And then finally, they have this string. T zero three three nine zero two zero zero. This is giving you the temperature and the dew point again, but it's giving it to you in tenths of degrees. So you see that zero three three nine means that it's a positive thirty three point nine degrees, and zero two zero zero means that the dew point is a positive twenty point zero degrees. Now, why is it that they decide to give you a little bit more accurate? temperature and dew point and why do they need to give you the sea level pressure in hectopascals? I can't answer that, but but this is what the remarks section is telling you anyways. Now as you might guess, with more complicated weather, you're going to have more complicated METAR reports, right? A, a clear day isn't going to have much to report, but as you get more kind of wacky weather coming in, you're going to get more and more of these uh, unknown strings of data coming up in these METAR. So, the, some of these airports here have some adverse weather reported, so they're pulled in here just so that we can have a look at what some of these things are going to start looking like. Uh, notice up top uh, with the arrow that it uh, points to that plus TSRA. What that means is that there's thunderstorms and heavy rain. The TS stands for thunderstorms and the RA stands for rain. There's a cheat sheet at the bottom for all these uh, abbreviations, by the way. And then the plus symbol means that it's heavy. So minus would be light, plus would be heavy. And the absence of that symbol would just in indicate moderate. Down at that second METAR for Appleton Municipal, then you, there you see the uh, abbreviation VCTS, which means that thunderstorms have been sp spotted in the vicinity of the airport, not directly over the top, but within range uh, of the airport. And then finally at the bottom, you've got a really long string there that R12 slash 2200 VP 6000 FT. That's called runway visual range. So your surface visibility, if you look back one string there at Beaumont, it says one and three quarter statute mile. That's a very low visibility at the surface. And what some airport METARs are going to do is they're going to get even more sophisticated with the visibility and say that beyond just regular surface visibility, this is what the visual range is actually going to be if you stand at the beginning of a certain runway and look down it. There's actually an equi a piece of equipment that's using lasers to detect how far down range of the runway you can look before you uh, lose visibility altogether. So what this means is that on runway 12 at this airport, there's a visual range of 2200 feet. And then that other symbol there, that BR, that stands for mist. Some of these uh, abbreviations don't make a ton of sense. I mean, they're based on Latin or French or some form of something to give them a unique abbreviation that doesn't mix. I mean, sometimes the way I remember mist is that mist is like a version of baby rain. You know, if rain is just normal rain, well, these little rain that's sitting out there is baby rain. So sometimes I think of BR, which stands for mist, as being baby rain to help me remember that. But there is that cheat sheet at the bottom there to help you. So let's look at this METAR for Beaumont, Southeast Texas, a little bit closer and let's really break down every item in here so that we're familiar with all the sometimes more obscure things in here. So beginning with the airport identifier, KBPT, that's easy, that's Beaumont Airport. And then it says on the 14th of the month at 2221 Zulu. Uh, I can't do that math. I know Texas is in the central time zone, so it'd be five hours behind. Uh, what would that be? That'd be 5 p.m., 5.21 p.m. Uh, if I'm wrong, you can hold me to it. But anyways, that's the day and time that that's been reported. And it's saying that the winds are from 230 degrees, so roughly out of the southeast, and they're at 8 knots gusting 28 knots, so it's it's fairly strong wind gusts there. The visibility, as I said, is one and three quarters of statute mile, and the visual range on runway one two. It looks like I misspoke in the earlier slide. I meant to say that the visual range on runway one two is better than six thousand feet. 
That next string says that there's thunderstorms and rain with my favorite baby rain in the vicinity. That's that TSRA means thunderstorms and rain, and then BR is that other form of precipitation, baby rain, mist. Then it's overcast at 1400 feet, OVC014 means overcast skies at 1400 foot ceilings above the ground. The temperature dew points are 26 and 24. The altimeter setting is 29.84 inches of mercury. And then we get into the remarks. This is where we get a little crazy. Now, before we get into the remarks, let me just say that the more important stuff in the METAR has already been covered here. It's kind of all the way up from the name of the airport to the alt altimeter setting. That's not to say that the remarks are unimportant, but sometimes they're like additional information uh, just to help you with a little bit of context. But let's go through what those remarks are saying. So first, firstly, it says AO2. This is the type of station that this airport has. It says that it can determine the precipitation type. And then this next string means that there's peak winds have been reported out of 250 degrees at 29 knots. And those were reported at 2155 Zulu. So you know, this is about uh, almost a half an hour before this METAR was issued. This reporting station detected a peak wind gust at 29 knots. And then they're showing that there's lightning in the distance. Distance is a term of art here in aviation weather. <clears throat> it means that it's more than 10 statute miles from the airport itself. So lightning in the distance to the east of the airport was detected. And then it says that thunderstorms began at 2100 Zulu. Again, we're just adding context to this type of weather that's been passing over the airport. Next, it says that 0.95 inches of rain has fallen in the last hour. And then you get that familiar temperature dew point spread, which is taken out into tenths of a degree Celsius. And then finally, that dollar sign at the end, <laughs> that means that somebody's going to have to pull out their wallet and start shelling out money because the station may require maintenance. Now, are you required to know all these things on a knowledge test? Well, not the remarks. You should know how to interpret a METAR, how to interpret the raw data of the METAR up through the remarks. There is a cheat sheet for the remarks and it's fairly long and it's in that aeronautical information manual and we'll show that to you a little late, a little bit later on but definitely get in the habit of giving these METARs a read through and we'll play with a couple of more in this course as well to give you some more familiarity with interpreting some of the data in this string.